Thank you so much for being here. My name is Mariana Marcaletti. I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I'm here to <coughs> present Latin American Radar, which is a news website about economic news in Latin America. So first, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about Latin America? You might think of crisis and turmoil and poverty and drug addiction and cartels and all that, right? But there is more to it than that. We're covering, let me give you three examples of stories we're covering so that you see the perspective. This person here, he was born in Argentina. He is a cartoonist and he opened his own publishing company and he made it to the cover of the New Yorker a few months ago. We interviewed him. Or for example, Bolivia. We have a writer there and she produced this piece that is about the past 10 years in Bolivia and how the economy is actually getting better when you might think that this, this is the poorest country in the region. Or for example, Venezuela, we read so much in mainstream media outlets about the crisis, but actually Venezuela is a country in Latin America with the highest level of entrepreneurship. And we did also did this piece. So Latin America, there are a few data points that prove what I'm saying. The GDP is growing at 4%. There is an internal market of 600 million people. And the middle class has increased by 50% over the past decade. So what's the audience we are targeting? We are targeting decision makers, investors, business people in, from the international markets because we're producing content in English so that if this information is available for them. Let me give you an example. I used to work at Google and this person, he had to travel to Latin America to do first-hand research on how to teach kids how to use Google Apps. He actually had to go there. He spends four months, he invests lots of money because he couldn't find this information anywhere else. So there is no resource nowadays where you can find all this information put together. So our vision, think of us as the foreign affairs of Latin America. So this is our website we launched three months ago. We have a few verticals and we are planning on expanding on more. One of them is development. <coughs> These are stories about urban development, um, public policy, economic studies, also a lot about politics, and we also have entrepreneurship. We are covering success stories and stories of underreported minorities like women-led initiatives across the region. And this is a story that you see here, we won an award by the Foreign Press Association, and last week there was the ceremony. Uh, we also launched a, a, an Android app that you can see here, and we also launched a newsletter, and we are planning on launching soon an iPhone version. Uh, we received great feedback. People have been reaching out. For example, the uh, Google Country Manager from Argentina, Mexico, he told me that this is a great resource. He's reading the stories and he gave me great feedback on how to improve this. Edward Avila, he's the CEO of Manos Accelerator. He's one of the only few accelerators in the US that focuses on Hispanics. And people from the media and from associations like the National Association of Hispanic Journalists, they also reach out uh, to do partnerships. Um, who is us? Um, I'm from Buenos Aires. I moved here eight months ago. Um, I'm a Fulbright student and I will be graduating in December. I will be spending the summer at the Washington Post as a digital producer. And I work at Google and I also work at the biggest TV news channel back home where I met Joanna. She is the UX designer and she's an expert on online marketing. And Pablo, Pablo is a developer and he's based in Silicon Valley. And the network <coughs> of contributors, these people are writing the story for free. They are reaching out because they are aligned with the science missions. They would also want Latin America to have a, you know, a different kind of visibility abroad. And they are producing this, these stories firsthand with original reporting. Um, our revenue, we are following two models. On the left, you can see the SCIFT. It's a tourism publication. They are selling paid reports. They are doing data-driven analysis. We are planning to work on that in the future as a potential um, revenue Source. And yes, as you can see on the other part, it's a German publication. They are targeting youth in Germany. They have only one big single sponsorship, and we are on the search, and we have a few meetings with big corporations and public sectors who might be interested in sponsoring Latin American radar. These are institutions that also focus on development. And so far, our studies have been picked up by La Nación and Grupo Clarín, which are the two among the five most read uh, media outlets online in Spanish language. Our studies had also become by PBS, and we've done partnerships with local content providers. They are producing the stories in Spanish, and we are working with them on the English version. In the future, we are also planning to launch another vertical, which is influencers, and we've been having conversations with decision makers back home who would like to have their word out in English. And um, so 
Thank you for your time for being here. The plans for the future are a lot. I would like to talk to you afterwards if you feel like it. And my ask is um, I would like to reach out to more English speaking people from here and actually get their feedback, especially people who work on the media and can give, let me know their thoughts. That would be great. Thank you so much. Mariana, um, two things I would say. The, the, I'm up over here. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, it's all right. Um, first of all, take a deep breath and slow down. Okay. You, you moved so quickly that I was reeling trying to keep up with you sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think it's helpful um, to sort of just, when you're getting ready, take a deep breath and then move more deliberately. Mm -hmm. um, I was really taken by the idea, I, I have to say, but I was curious. I, I'm not sure that I quite grasp whether you're pitching this at individuals, whether you're pitching it at industry and business, or who exactly you're pitching here. No, to the, to the consumer market. I mean, it's not a B2B business, it's more to consumer, but it's a very specific audience. Uh -huh. So it's mainly business strategies, decision makers, politicians. Okay, yeah. cool, thanks. Thank you. You talked about a network of contributors. You said at this point, mm -hmm. people are contributing for free, mm -hmm. but how, what's the longevity on that? And how do actually, you scale that up? Actually, we did a little bit uh, of a test. My co-founder, Pablo, he thought, well, maybe if we pay $20 per writer, we get more volume. We tried that, and people, they don't want to get paid. They are doing it because they believe in the product, and they believe that it's their you know, aligned to the site's missions. They also want their name out there in English and it gives them like visibility and clips, but actually what they want is some kind of influence in the world. When you, you publish something in English, it reaches an international audience. So that's what the people want. They want their stories out there. There are people writing books, publishing stories back home, and they have lots of clips in Spanish, but they don't make it to English media. And that's why they are contributing. Mariana, I think... Um, I'll stand back. Uh, I, I think it's, I, I agree with you, there's a need. I think there's a lot of interest. One concern I'd have with the way you start the presentation, there's so much bad news. It's like a lot of presentations on Africa, like, oh, you've heard all the bad stuff. Now you're going to hear all the good stuff. As a consumer, I don't want to go to a site that's only going to give me a filtered view. And I think if you're not giving that filtered positive view of Latin America, I think you need to make that clear in your presentation that this is going to give you all the intelligence you need to know about this region, not just a promotional version. Because I came away thinking this is promotional, and that to me is not a news site. No, I should not have made that clear. No, it's actually it's journalism. I'm, uh, the stories, if you read the one about Venezuela, we cover the opportunities and also the risks. So I, I wouldn't start then with the you've heard all the bad news and we're going to be covering the great entrepreneurs and such because there's especially somebody going into a new market, that's why they consult Kroll, EIU, others. They want to know the truth of what's going on in those markets, positive and negative. Oh, yes, it's actually journalism. I've tried to make it as less no, unbiased as right. possible. Great, thank you. I actually have it on the slide, but I forgot to mention I had the World Cup and the sports. But that's a great point. Yes. I had a question regarding. Uh, there was a point before about um, scaling and your contributors now being free. I thought the exact same thing that. Um, you may now have a, a number of contributors who want to contribute for free, but as you scale and expand and potentially go beyond just Latin America, um, just think a little bit about you know how you're going to have that contributor base and what that uh, model might be in terms of cost, because I think uh, it, it's not sustainable if they're all free. Yes, I agree with you. And actually, what contributors look for, of course, eventually we will, as we get revenue, we will begin paying them. But I found out that they, apart from visibility, they are looking for resources and coaching. So we're building resources for contributors. We're doing video on how to build 
interactive storytelling, how to write in English. We're giving them a lot of resources for education and they also feel that that is good. But that's, uh, that's for the second stage, certainly I should think of that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Just real quick, so uh, not to go on about that first slide again, but um, to pivot that into a business opportunity, I think mm -hmm. um, coming from a business that's expanding and thinking about Latin America and serves clients who are already thinking about Latin America, I actually think the, the perception of Latin America in the business community now is, is one of economic growth and potential and opportunity for investment and expansion. So, um, so you definitely don't need all the bad stuff because I think we get, I think, a lot of people get that there's opportunity there. <coughs> and one thing I really liked is that when you talked, got to the revenue models, it wasn't just you know advertising in the traditional sense, or, or and you talked about the, the data-driven reports, and you also talked about this person from Google. So I would just sort of encourage you to think more about that road a little bit more, for because there are tangible, actionable uh, things that people need when they're thinking about growing into the Latin American market and, and ways to get started, where to where to look, where to focus, data, information, insights around that, which you probably are, are starting to gather and you're thinking about gathering as you build out your business models. And again, I think from the US business perspective, for example, um, Latin America, I tell you for some of our clients right now, it's top of their mind. It's one of their main themes of expansion. So there's, there's but, but I don't know yet whether that's all being served by the available resources. So I think I've done my market research and I interview mainly Ameri Americans who have an yeah. interest in Latin America. I've been to NYU and Columbia. They have the observatories on Latin America. And what I found out there, they don't, they don't need breaking news. They already have that in mm -hmm. Bloomberg and other media outlets. But they would like to read like in-depth reports exactly. with information on which are the right people they should plug into, which are the industries or organizations, potential partnerships, and going deeper into issues and how to work out these issues. So for example, if you can't buy dollars in Venezuela, how can you get away with it? How do actually do people there get away with it? So it's a lot of cultural analysis as well. It's not only economy, but it's explaining how the economy works differently in Latin America. And that's why I think that uh, something different about this is that since it's actually produced by Latin Americans, they know these tricks. Mm -hmm. They know how to explain it. And the, I think there is a need for that. In my market research, most of the people told me they would like to go deeper apart from the bigger picture, going into details. Yep, I think so too. And maybe with some industry, different industry focuses as well, kind of digging deeper into certain specific industries yeah. and sectors. But yes, yeah. completely. <laughs> Marion, just a very quick point towards the end. Um, you had four amazing people saying how wonderful your, your, your business is. Four amazing people with huge salaries and huge budgets. Why on earth are you, the one thing that's thinking is, why is this a website, being blunt? I mean, we come, uh, I know, um, is this, should this actually be some sort of magazine or a subscription bundle? Should this be a sort of a, a, sort of a value added subscription service? Uh, there's a company in New York, I think, called L2 Think Tank, which does essentially sort of, here's an interesting market snapshot, now pay us for it, now give us a load of money and we'll give you all the details. Um, I'll be quite frank and honest, this doesn't really feel like it should be something that is just a website or an app. It feels like it should be something you are hard charging for because as echoing Dan's sentiment, uh, Dan's statements, companies are looking to, to, to growth markets at the moment and they're looking for everything they can get a hold of and they are willing to pay.